So, you know, we're, we're setting the bar too high and in a way wrong for, for so many people by thinking that, that until we achieve 50% division in all professions, we've somehow failed to, to create a free and just society. Um, because if it turns out, and it, and it uh, seems to have turned out that way, I think we almost all know that, even a bit intuitively, that men and women really are different from each other. But, but not like black and white are different from one another. Um, there's a huge amount of overlap. And there are women who want to be engineers, and there are men who want to be nurses or work in kindergartens. Um, and none of them should be uh, ever disbarred from those occupations simply because the majority of people happen to be the other sex. That would, that's easy to see, is completely unfair. <clears throat> but we may be wasting our time and, and creating uh, a lot of stress around trying to achieve this 50-50 split when, when it's not really doing anyone any good. So, so that's, that would be my commentary on the ethics of that. Um, and in the last little bit, uh, across the board, I think, is a, is a misconception of, of evolution. And when you say evolutionary psychology, or you mention Darwin, you, you, most, most people immediately get a picture, you know, of a lion uh, tackling a zebra and uh, ripping its throat out. So it's this sort of nature, you know, bloody in tooth and claw vision of, of that's, that's what Darwinism is, or that's what evolution is all about. Now, the survival uh, is, a, is the main driving force of evolution. But what's a little bit hard to, to grasp is that it's not just about who, who can dominate someone else, in, in this sort of uh, violent way, but that, that uh, you know, our feelings of, of love, our, our close family ties, the way we involve ourselves with our friends, and, and on and on, on, on many levels in our psyche, on all levels really, are also based on uh, our evolution uh, based on Darwin's theory and, uh, and natural selection, that, that, it, that natural selection can also uh, actually choose to, to develop uh, beings with com most, you know, complex enough minds that begin to start treating each other well. And, uh, and, and this is a whole other field uh, which uh, I think has an awful lot to say about, about how we might try to look more deeply into um, uh, society and, and realize what are some of the underlying drives that most everyone has, this sort of universal human nature <clears throat> that lies underneath everything, and, and our culture, of course, um, are expressions that, that are mapped on to, to that groundwork, and we get a lot of variety in culture, so it's not that everyone will act exactly the same all the time, but to sort of know what, what is the, uh, sort of the underlying constitution of human beings, and why might we see some of the things we see in the world today. So, uh, I would hope that uh, this debate moves in a positive direction. Um, I think that the, the sociologists that I've seen um, need, need to sort of embrace the idea that it's okay to, to have been wrong about some of the things they were saying. Um, and that, that by doing that, they actually do not lose face. They, uh, they would gain an awful lot of respect, I think, by many people, cer certainly me, to hear someone just stand up and say, wow, that was extremely interesting. That is very different from anything I've been ever thinking. But 
it does seem solidly based and I need to look into this because this, this looks important. And I think the, the sociologists, they, they um, you know, with the status of where they're sitting, they, they have a moral obligation to, to explore these things as deeply as possibly and openly as possibly. And I think that, that they, they really will find that there's nothing dangerous uh, coming in from science. Uh, there's not been a program yet on race, but, but I mean, the things that are coming down from science now through, through detailed genetic studies and, and a clear view of <clears throat> that we all come from Africa, not so very long ago, around 50,000 years ago, that even the idea of race from a scientific point of view is starting to sort of evaporate, that, that it's not even a term that we should be, should be using, even though many of us look very different. We're so closely related that our differences don't really constitute what we would call a racial difference. And that's from science. That's not just, uh, you know, heady, um, you know, well, that sounds nice to say, and I can ground my ethics in that, so I'll just say it because it's convenient. That, that actually the evidence is going that way. And to, for anyone to push back from that and say, no, 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 I'm not going to, uh, I'm not even going to consider these biological aspects because I'm afraid it's too dangerous for, for how I feel about how we need to, uh, to continue to improve society, improve fairness, reduce violence, um, and, and just understand what we're up against here. Uh, in, in an even broader perspective, I think that it has something to say about how we're going to move on and try to be good custodians, not just of ourselves, but, but even of our planet. Um, you know, whether we like it or not, our, our population now and the, po- and, and the biomass of our domesticated plants and animals absolutely dominates this planet now. And, and we can like it or not, but we are the custodians now. There, there's no one else that's going to do it. There's no one else who has no other species that even has a chance to try to manage this. And I think it's optimistic to see that human, humanity has begun to expand um, their circle of interest, you know, moving away from just being concerned about just my family and perhaps a few close friends who are closely allied with me, to, to seeing a broader perspective and wanting to encompass all of humanity inside that circle of concerns. And eventually, uh, you know, to encompass also our environment and our world. And uh, I think trying to understand ourselves biologically and culturally and every other way we can um, is very important now. Uh, more important than it's ever been, to, to try to understand what are we going to do next? How can we take care of ourselves? How can we take care of the environment we live in so that we can continue this amazing uh, cultural development that we've had? You know, uh, the world has actually become more peaceful over the last few hundred years, even though there are still wars and there's still things that we we don't want, if, if we look back on how things were, we have gotten better over time. And I think we can continue to get better as long as we can hold it together. And I think understanding our nature uh, as clearly as possible is the best way to try to do that. And to not do it could even be somewhat dangerous. And that's it.